Lissa Productions. Welcome back to Experimental Physics. Last time we explored free oscillations of a mass spring system. And this time we're going to begin an exploration of damped oscillations. So we will assume as we did last time that the spring force is given by Hooke's law, just minus some constant times the displacement. But instead of the assumption of no energy dissipation, we deliberately add into the system a mechanism for dissipating the energy. And we're making the assumption that this dissipative force is simply minus some constant times the velocity. So if the system is not moving, there's no damping force. If it's moving very fast, there's a large damping force. And as usual, we will assume that Isaac Newton can be trusted when he says that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So we combine the spring force and the damping force and we get MA. When we solve that differential equation, what we get is an expression for damped oscillations. So instead of the system oscillating freely like a cosine, we have oscillations with an exponentially decaying amplitude. And if you plot the amplitude as a function of time, it kind of looks like this. So what we will be doing experimentally is to determine the maximum excursion of the system. So starting from rest at some position x naught, you let the system go. It goes through one complete oscillation and comes back, but not quite to where it was before. And it goes through another oscillation and comes back to some smaller position and so forth. So after the first period, if we plot in multiples of the period, after one period, the system is here. After two periods, the system is here. After three periods, it's down there and so forth. What we'd like to do is to plot the amplitude as it decays in such a way that you can extract from it the damping constant in the exponent. Now how to do that experimentally? What we want to do is come back to our linear air track with the gliding mass and remove all the excess masses. So this is just the glider by itself. And now we want to hook up the original system with four springs. So if you find in the lab only two of the springs, just obtain the rest of the springs and hook them up. And the same on the other end so that you have the original glider all by itself. and four springs. Now we'll need to turn on the air supply. So that removes the friction between the glider and the track. But now we're going to introduce into the system the force that depends roughly on the velocity of the object. We have some magnets and what you'd like to do is take just two of the magnets and place the flat faces of the magnets right on the wings of the glider and the magnetic force between them will hold them nicely onto the wings of the glider. Then take a little extra mass of the non-magnetic kind and just load them on. So you have a magnet on one side with a little extra mass and a magnet on the other side with a little extra mass. Now the mass of each of those magnets is approximately the same as the mass of one of these non-magnetic masses that you used last time. So what you might want to do, uh, since you're going to get the, uh, the damping constant from the exponent in this decaying exponential, you'll need to know what the mass of the system is. So you could take one of the magnets and place it on the analytical balance and measure the mass. The trouble with that is that the magnet actually influences the reading a little bit. So if you want a much more reliable measure of the mass, I'm afraid we'll have to use old technology, the mechanical triple beam balance. So just put the magnet on the balance and uh, adjust 
until you get a, a reading of the mass of the magnet the old-fashioned way. So just be aware that the magnetic field from the magnets will disturb the reading on the balance just a little bit. Okay, now uh, what we want to do is to start out with the glider in equilibrium and take note of where one of the corners of the glider is. So maybe right about here. Uh, make a really careful reading of the position of the glider on the track in equilibrium. Then displace the glider by 10 centimeters. So we'll start it with an X naught of 10 centimeters. Then release it from rest and watch this by eye and just watch where the corner of the glider returns after one cycle. And that's going to be a little bit tricky. You'll have to watch it carefully, patiently, but you can see it started out in this position at rest and now it's decayed down to this point. So just watch where is the position of the glider after each cycle of oscillation. Maybe you want to do that several times for each position. So note where it is at uh, time t equals zero and then note where does it come back after one complete oscillation. Maybe stop it again and start it over again and watch where it comes back after two cycles of oscillation. One, two, so read carefully where the glider is after two cycles of oscillation and then stop it, start it again. One, two, three, read where it is after three cycles of oscillation and so forth. So the idea will be to plot the position of the glider after each complete cycle of oscillation. And from that information you'll be able to extract <clears throat> what the damping constant is. Now, uh, another issue with the damping the period of oscillation is not quite what it was without the damping. It's slightly longer with the damping. So you might want to take your photo gate timer and just carefully make a measurement of the oscillation period with the damping. <clears throat> so set this back to the pendulum mode. and get a reading of what the new period actually is with the damping and use that to determine what T is when you plot the graph. So having done that, gather enough data. You may want to get maybe 10 or 15 or 20 uh, positions as a function of time over 10 or 15 or 20 periods. Then you can change the amount of damping. So just remove the magnets and stack them up this time. So instead of just one magnet and one non-magnetic mass, you can take a stack of two magnets on each side. That will keep the mass of the system approximately constant. Again, the mass of these magnets is approximately the same as one of these, but you might want to measure it carefully just to know what it is. With the extra magnets, you increase the damping force. So we'll start this again at about 10 centimeters displacement. And you'll be able to see that the damping is much stronger. It returns to uh, a smaller position at the end of each cycle. The damping is much more noticeable with the stronger magnetic field. So try it that way with the extra damping and get a different damping constant for the four magnets and then compare uh, what is the strength of the damping with four magnets relative to the strength of the damping with just two magnets and the two non-magnetic masses. So uh, once again, just to recap what we're doing here, we are looking at the decaying oscillations and exponentially decreasing amplitude as a function of time. You want to measure carefully what is the position of the glider at the end of each cycle of oscillation and do that for as many periods as you need to do in order to get good data and to determine what the damping constant is for two different conditions. And that's it.